Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd Apocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. All right, guys. We're back. Um, uh, not a huge uh, docket this week, uh, but some pretty big stories in it, uh, or at least one huge story. Um, all right. So let's jump right into it. Uh, checked out. Um, we were out last week because of the holiday, so uh, I actually got a chance to watch things, which is crazy. Um, I watched Peanut Butter Falcon. Do um, you know what this is? Uh, uh, it's something about, uh, someone with special needs or something like that. Yeah. So this is, um, it's starring Shia, uh, Shia LaBeouf. Um, and it's, it's a story. Let, let me just say this before I get into this, this, I think it's, I, I think it might be time to separate the craziness from the level of skill of an actor that Shia LaBeouf is. Yeah, he's he so Shia LaBeouf um he's always been a, a an actor that's not bad, right? right? Like he's not a bad actor. But when you're when you put okay actors in bad movies, a la right. Transformers, it makes the actors look bad because they're like it, they're I don't working know. with garbage right they're working with garbage and that was at a point in his career where he wasn't i don't think he was as good as he is now no definitely not he was pretty young right. he, yeah he was very young like this his his way of emoting was no 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 and 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 that's what you know people re- that's what people see right cuz that's i mean it's easily the movie that most people have seen of him is, or is that franchise, right? Um, because right. it's the biggest. Nah, yo, he's a good actor. Like, even, I, I would even venture to say, like, far more on the scale of good to great than he is from, like, bad to mediocre, right? Like, and that's not to say he's a great actor, but I think he's quite good. Um, this being one of them, right? Like, I, I think he was really great in Fury. Uh, that David Ayer movie about World War II in the tank, which was fucking excellent, I thought. Um, if you've not seen it, you should check it out. It was actually uh, really well done. But um, this, uh, the Peanut Butter Falcon, is also another implication of how good of an actor he is when given a good script and given a, a good movie. Um, it, Wikipedia labels it as a comedy drama. I, I don't know that I would label it as a comedy drama, more just a drama. Um but this is starring him, uh, this guy, uh, Zach, uh, got, gots again, uh, and Dakota, uh, Johnson, John Hawks, and John Barenthal is in it as well. And Tom Hayden Church, who has a great role that I'll explain in a second. So the, the film is about, uh, the special needs kid who, um, whose name is Zach. He, he does have Down syndrome. The actor does have Downs. Um, and he is, because of the town that he lives in, they don't have a facility for him to actually be in like a place that would take normally take care of, you know, Downs adults or D- Downs teenagers. I guess he's, you know, he's 22, but you know, obviously he, his, you know, his maturity level is, is below that. Um, and so they just put him in an old folks home, right? Like his family abandons him or whatever. So they just put him in just an, an adult daycare, right? So he's surrounded by all these old people. Um, and he's a huge wrestling fan, right? Um, and he's always trying to escape this place because he's 22 and he's like, I don't understand why my roommate is 65. <laughs> like, it just fucking sucks. Um, but he's this like really sweet kid. Um, and while that's going on, you have, um, Tyler played by, uh, Shia LaBeouf, who is like, uh, like a, a like a, a fisherman and, he has this issue, like he steals other people's crab pots and he's just kind of a general loser. Um, but he ends up lighting all of these guys crab pots on fire after they like beat him up. Um, and so he's kind of on the run, right? Cause these guys are like, if I catch you, I'm going to, I'm going to beat your ass. Um, and so the two, the two characters cross paths as Zach escapes the, the, uh, the facility again. Um, now the, the cool thing is, Tyler is on his way. I forget where they are. Um, but he's on it. He's, he's on his way to Florida, like to get away from his life, to move to Florida, to like start a fishing career down there away from all this bullshit and kind of reinvent himself. 
And Zach is just running. He's just like, oh, I'm just going to leave. Um, and so they run into each other and they kind of, you know, he looks out for him and he's really sweet to, to Zach. And the whole point is that he never treats Zach as less than. Like he obviously realizes he has downs, but he always kind of treats him almost like an, an equal. And Zach, you know, loves him like a brother for that, right? Um, and it's a really sweet movie, and it, and it's cool to see Downs actors get their chance and stuff like that, and, it, and it's really quite good. What is interesting is that he Zach is a huge wrestling fan, and he really has obsessed about this tape that he had from like ten years ago um, of this wrestler, this local wrestler called the Salt, Saltwater Redneck, <laughs> played by Michael Hayden Church, um, and so on his way to Florida, he you know he takes Zach with him. And they go to the town that Saltwater Redneck is from trying to meet him. And it's been, even though Zach has been watching this tape for like 10 years, that guy has well and retired, right? Like he's like, it's Michael Hayden Church. He's like, they go to his house and he's like, yeah, man, I don't, I don't do that anymore. Like, it's cool. Like, but I, you know, I'm glad this kid's a fan, but I, yeah, I don't do any of that. And so like he's kind of hurt by it, like finding out that. Like saltwater redneck doesn't live there anymore, and Michael Hayden Church kind of goes, "Oh well, this kid like, nah, fuck it, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw on the costume one last time and like give this kid a show, right?" And he like comes out in character, or whatever, and it's this really fucking sweet moment where he takes him to like this backyard wrestling thing where like these like kind of rednecks are wrestling. But what's cool is there's a fucking cameo of uh, Jake the Snake uh, and Mick Foley are both in it. Um. <laughs> And uh, I want to say, is it Kevin Nash who was also in this? Um, I'm, uh, I'm not surprised. Um, which is pretty fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, that actor might be a wrestling fan for real. Like, Yeah, he probably this, is. Yeah, like, and wrestlers, um, you know, they... Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's just Mick Foley and Jake the Snake. Wrestlers, uh, wrestlers really do enjoy making kids feel great yeah you know like as as much crap as we give wrestling um they are very philanthropic um even the major you know, like the major companies are now yeah. you know you could put your cynical hat on uh justly uh when i tell you that stephanie mcmahon once said that philanthropy is the future of marketing which that is just, pretty. That sounds it, gross. It's, it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> but at pretending the same time, to care is a way to make money. Uh, at the, same time, the actual wrestlers actually do care. Yeah. So it's. Uh, I mean, I think John Cena. It, does he still hold the record of Make a Wishes? I think he still does. Yeah. Like <laughs> I think he still does, which is awesome. But um, yeah, that's cool, man. That's it, cool. But it, it was it was kind of cool to see them uh, them there, and like at that point, Jake the Snake is kind of playing himself as a destitute loser, like who kind of <laughs> just his life just went to shit, and then he got kind of got his life uh, together, you know, in real life. But um, it's really good. Um, it's a very sweet movie. It's got it's got an ending that I think. Uh, works really well. Um, underrated actor who is in this movie um, that I feel like if you don't know who he is, that's a shame. John Hawks. I've never seen John Hawks in anything that he's not tremendous in. Nothing. Nothing. Um, if you've never seen The Sessions, you should. That's a fucking tremendous movie. And you can see Helen Hunt naked at age 50. Um, not bad, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's really good. It's uh, it's a It's a good story and it's and it's it's a nice like with all the shit in the world it's just a nice story to to see two people come together who are from very different worlds it's just a lovely story um i've been i i watched the first two or three episodes i think it was maybe the first two episodes of titans and i said i was very bored with it um but i was going to keep going i did not lie i did um I was planning on I, – I didn't feel well yesterday, so I was like, well, let me put on something that will lull me to sleep. Let me throw on Titans. 
<laughs> and I watched four episodes, four, four, four or five episodes. Um, it's growing on me. I got to tell you, it's growing on me. I think if you can get past maybe the first three episodes, uh, you probably wouldn't mind it. It's not amazing. Um, it certainly has some like dragging points. I think the biggest is uh, uh, Raven. I, I don't find her to be a particularly interesting character. Like though the first season is kind of sort of surrounding her story and like what's up with her. I just don't find her interesting. Oh, magic witch girl. Like, eh, all right, all right. Like I, I've seen that too many times. Um, ironically, the most interesting character is is probably Dick Grayson only because of everything surrounding him, right? Like the show gets exponentially more interesting when Jason Todd shows up. Okay. Cause Is he's it, a uh, fucking asshole. <laughs> he's an asshole. So, uh, where would you on the, on the pH scale of CW shows? Mm. Um, is this in the, in the middle is like a CW show. And then, you know, one side is better and then the other side is worse. Where where does this fall? It's better. It's better because it doesn't fall into the same boring formula. There is no man in a chair. There is, you know, there's no, the team is back in the fucking tech studio. <laughs> like, it's not, it, it's not that. It, it is its own thing. Um, ironically, I think it did the, sh- I don't know, I, I, I guess... I guess it introduces Doom Patrol before Doom Patrol had its own series. I'm I'm pretty sure if if I recall, um, it does a terrible job introducing Doom Patrol to that universe. I don't like watching the episode with the Doom Patrol. Um, I was just kind of like, I wouldn't have watched that show if that was what I went off of. Like, I just did not think they gave them a good intro. Now Doom Patrol on its own is far more interesting and and actually I think it's much better than Titans. It's they're just the characters are more interesting. Um yeah. but it's 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 growing on me. I, I get why people say that the second season is exponentially better than the first because as season one goes on, it's getting better and better. But like the dynamic between Jason Todd showing up and being like, yo, I'm the new Robin. Like I always want to meet you, but like you're kind of a bitch. And I love <laughs> fucking people up. For real. Like, that's just his whole thing. Like, he beats up and kills cops, and he's like, yo, I work for Batman. This shit is awesome. <laughs> like, like he's like, I like beating people up. Like, he fakes to get into a club and just, like, picks a fight with a guy who's clearly bigger than him. And, he, and the guy's like, you want me to beat you up? And he's like, I'd love for you to try. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's 19. Like, he's he's a little, like, a little kid. Um, So it's, yeah, it's growing on me. I, I have to say, um. I'm not like, this is must see TV type of thing. But like, if you don't have anything else to watch and you can get through the first three seasons, yeah, it's not, or three, three episodes, it's not bad. It's not bad. So we'll see. Um, cool. it's enough for me to continue watching it when I don't have anything else to watch. Um, cool. uh, let's talk about, uh, The Mandalorian. Uh, just the episode with, uh, the introduction of, uh, Ahsoka Tano. What were your thoughts? The about? highest rated episode of The Mandalorian to, uh, no one's surprise. Um, and all of the Star Wars fans are like, fuck the Mandalorian. Let's just get this Clone Wars shit going. Live action Clone Wars. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> the, the episode itself, um, was, was, uh, peak older star. It, it had the perfect balance. This is probably the best episode of the mandalorian that that this is what every star wars fan everywhere will agree that this is probably the best episode of this television series that is probably ever gonna have right it's got yeah probably it's it's got your western it's got your your kurosawa stuff it's got michael bean for jack (laughs) specifically it's got Ahsoka Tano for all of the prequels fans. Right. It is, it, it is, it was a really, it was peak Star Wars of what Star Wars is supposed to be in my eyes, yeah, which agreed. is space Western uh, samurai. 
And it took all three of those elements and it, 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 it made something that was while very on the nose, like some of those shots were like ripped off of Kurosawa movies. Oh, no, right? 100%. <laughs> but, but at the same time, like, like the, the juxtaposition of literally having a Western style standoff right. and an Eastern style standoff at the same time, like it's, it, it, it ain't high art. But it hits you right where it needs to hit you. I mean, the, the thing is, I saw someone say, um, before this episode came out, it was maybe like two weeks ago, and they said, you know, the Mandalorian is great, but it's starting to get formulaic. I was like, it's a Western. <laughs> like, are you serious? Like, yeah. It's a, ser- it's a serialized Western. Yeah. That's, spoiler alert. Every episode of the Mandalorian can be traced back to an episode of Gunsmoke. Okay? Like, 100%. It just it can be. It's fine. Um. Look, I loved it. I thought it was dope. I didn't watch the Clone Wars, so like I don't have like some birth of no- you know birth of knowledge uh, uh, when it comes to uh, Ahsoka. But she looked fucking dope. Like it looked awesome. It was so, a lot of fun. So since literally no one has told me that I should watch the Clone Wars, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Leonardo, thanks for never <laughs> mentioning that show. Yeah, I you thought asshole. you were the Star Wars guy. I uh, thought that you, t- uh, if anything, I would think, uh, you know what? I don't even think he's seen it. Oh, no, there's a, no, no way. No way. Does he so even know I who s- this character is? I doubt it. I, I, doubt, I it. doubt it. I <laughs> doubt it. Um, he's, you know, he's in a chair right now listening to this, getting a full <laughs> Ahsoka Tano back piece. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> I, uh, I draw with a burrito in her hand. Oh, that was awesome. I, I started watching the Clone Wars because I said I told him that I was going to watch it and I am a man of my word. I am going to watch it. And I started I, I just started over. I started earlier and I couldn't get past the first couple of episodes. That movie was bad, but I, I did watch it. I didn't watch that movie over. But I, I started the the first season over. And I'm finished season two. Um in in about a week. Yeah, man. That show was good. And I 100% can can see why if you watch that show, you have a you have a different appreciation for the prequel movies. Now, mm-hmm. that is not to say that the prequel movies are good, right? right? You shouldn't have to watch 130 episodes of a television show <laughs> no, for to three get movies it. to be good. Right. That would right? be ridiculous. But at the same time, yeah, I get it. I get it, dude. Like, I love how, and the show doesn't start getting good to like the end of season one when the bounty hunters show up. Um, but it's, it's good, man. I, uh, I get, I, I kind of get why people like Ahsoka. Uh, from what I understand, like, there are some, they, like, shit gets real heavy right. later on. Um, which is why people are going like crazy for Ahsoka. But I love that the Jedi are depicted in the way they are, right? Because the Jedi, like when you really break them down, they're a religious military group. Yeah. And That's and it's up. that that conscript children to fight in their wars for them, right? Like yeah. it, like they're they're shady as fuck. Yeah. And and that show really shows that, right? Like they're all about oh, whoa, oh, peace. We're peacekeepers and shit. But like, yeah, torture, via weapons. <laughs> right. They they torture my man Cad Bane at one point, yo. Like they're like they're like, you know, you know everybody knows Jedi mind trick, right? And yeah. if you're smart enough, like pff, your mind tricks don't work on me, right? So, at one point Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Mace Windu have to get information from Cad Bane, who is this like kick ass bounty hunter, right? And they're like, one person does Jedi mind trick. He's like, get the fuck out of here. Your, your, your Jedi mind tricks can't work on me. And then they, the three of them confer and they're like, well, we gotta, I mean, we gotta step it up a bit. I mean, we could all Jedi mind trick them. And that one of them's like, uh, that's kind of torture, dude. And they're like, yeah, but we gotta get this information, man. Yeah, like, oh, that's fucked up. And and they, are they, and they the U.S. government, <laughs> and they they Jedi mind gangbang this motherfucker, yo. And it's, 
I don't need that. I don't. I don't need that thought process. Thank you very much. It's it's wild, yo. The Je- and 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 the Jedi do some some really some really iffy shit uh, because they're in the middle of a war, and and right. all that all that politics bullshit from the prequels. prequels yeah. It all makes sense because they have time to really talk about it, right? Like, like it, it's essentially a civil war, right? right? The galactic, but- the the galactic. Republic <clears throat> is is the Union, I guess, and the Confederacy <laughs> of 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 separatists is the <laughs> is the is the is the, is the South, right? Right. And um, it's good, man. <clears throat> it's good. I love the characterization of people, and you can see Anakin and and Obi Wan. They bicker, but it's friendly, but not really, like because the two get on each other's nerves and shit. You can see Anakin like doing shit that's like, whoa, dude, like that's not the Jedi way, yo. Know? Like, like some like one person is like, hey, we need to we we need to be cool, right? We need to calm down. Anakin just stabs a motherfucker in the back with a lightsaber and kills him. He's just like, what? He was gonna he was gonna blow something up. Like, that's some kind of that's kind of some dark side shit, yo. Right. Like where the slide the slide to him is multiple seasons versus Right. For 15 minutes. Right. Like it makes it makes <clears throat> the the movies make sense. So I'm I'm committed to watching every episode. And uh but I, I do have a question for uh Leonardo. When when I get to season six, do I start Rebels or do I just go through season seven and then start Rebels? So riddle me that and and I will I will report back when all this is done. Okay. All right. It, look, I got to tell you, it makes me definitely want to try again. Um, I, I don't think everybody's right. You can you can skip season one if you really want to. You can skip season one. I'm going to skip honestly, season two, or I'm going to skip season one because honestly, season one, I tried watching that first episode. I was like, "This is a little kid show." Like I, I and it's. I couldn't get through it. I was like, this is really not working for me. One of the episodes in see or or one of the arcs in season two, because they have like two and three episode arcs and then, you know, filler. One of the episodes in season <clears throat> two is all about Boba Fett trying to get revenge on Mace Windu for killing his father. Oh, okay. Like, see, I, like, I'm I'm down for that. Yeah, man. Like it's it's super interesting. And some of the some of the stories are really kitty, but they kind of the the maturity of the show grows throughout the seasons, but you can skip season one. And honestly, it, like you don't need to have watched the show to appreciate that episode of the Mandalorian. Right. But, um, but it's a good show. It's worth watching. If you want to get your daughter into star Wars, I think Ahsoka is a, is a wonderful character. Yeah. That feels right. That feels yeah. Right. So uh, you might want to wait until, I don't know when you're going to let, your your child watch TV. She she you know, watches she years. she has about a ten minute TV toleration and it's Sesame Street only. <laughs> right. Right. Which is like a couple segments of something. She's just not into TV. Like she's just Right. I'm know. saying like it like years. years from now. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah definitely. Years from now. Yeah, like I'll uh, sit and watch all of this shit with her uh eventually anyway. But no. <laughs> Sheesh, yeah. yo, I'm like, yo, you can't even watch Big Bird for 15 minutes. I'm not sitting there trying to watch <laughs> right. a 30 minute show with <laughs> characters. Like, <laughs> Big Bird is like the the letter A, and she's like, boring. I already know what A is. Get the fuck out of right. here. Next I know thing. my alphabet. Get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah. Next thing. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Make that snuffleupagus guy do something interesting. Let's go. Um. No, but I I I actually thought the episode was really well done. I I agree with you. It is a perfect mix of sort of the Kurosawa and uh, Western style. Um. It was cool to see Michael Bean. Um. That was great. I thought um Rosaria Dawson was great. Like she looked dope. Like the the costume looked awesome. The you know. The uh, the makeup and everything looked really good. Um, it looked like a live action version of that character, right? Like it was exactly it's exactly what I would ex- I would expect from like quality work. Um, but I agree with you. I think that this is exactly what people want from Star Wars, and I would argue what people really want is not as much magical wizards. It just 
They have yeah. to be used sparingly. Like they just right. have to be exactly. used sparingly because they make so much impact. Like the Mandalorian is so good. And then she shows up and you're like, oh shit, son, lightsabers. <laughs> and it's so awesome. But if that was right. every single week and it was like, ah, oh, like going all the time, it takes away from the drama of it. Like if you go back and look at the original movies, they work really well. And part of it, in my opinion, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why they work well, but part of it, in my opinion, is there's not lightsaber fights every two minutes in those movies. When people pop their lightsabers, there is shit is going down. Like it is, it is for real. It is not, oh shit, I gotta open a, I gotta open a can of soda. <laughs> like, like it's right. not for user everything. It's not when Homer got a gun that one time on The Simpsons. Um, right. but I think that's where this show works really well. And I, I'm a, I'm afraid that I, I, I don't want the Mandalorian to be Clone Wars Part Two, right? right. Like I, I want it, I want it to be its own thing. If you want to do like spinoffs or whatever, well, the the talk is that Ahsoka is getting her own uh, series. That yeah, and I think that's what people are gonna say that they want. Yeah. Um, which I, look, I'm not gonna lie and be like, oh, you know, I wouldn't watch it. No, oh, I would get check the fuck it out. out. Hell yes. Right, I would check it out, but at the same time. Uh, the world is big, man, and I just don't want that to be the only thing. I look, who the fuck don't like lightsabers, yo? I yeah. love that stuff, but it's not. I just don't want it to be the only thing. That's right. it, and that, and that's what the movies have become. Is that's the that's the only thing it is is hard focused on that and nothing else. Um, yeah, look, I I mean, if you haven't watched the episode by now, like that's crazy. If you're a huge fan of the show, but um. It's clear that like her whole thing of like looking for for uh, Thrawn, that feels to me like that's the jumping off point for her series, right? Like that's where her series goes in that direction, and then the Mandalorian kind of continues, um, which I'm fine with. I would I would just hope that okay, you get this Ahsoka Tano show, but partner her up with some people who are not Jedi. You know, like I think that would work really well. Um, whether that's giving her a crew that, you know, she, like on, you know, I don't know, the characters from Rebels or whatever, but, you know, not everybody who is, um, who are Jedi, that way they can have some people to bounce off of who are less powered. I mean, like the core of the original movies, I mean, you got arguably two, at least showing two non powered characters versus, you know, versus hanging out with Luke, right? So it's like, if Luke, Leia, and Han all three had powers, it feels like a very different movie, right? Although Leia does, but obviously it's it's not shown uh, to that extent in the originals. So I, I'm i here for it. I, I just – I hope that they have figured out why The Mandalorian works so well. Um, and maybe TV budgets will keep it a little under wraps too. Yeah. So Yeah. I mean it's so not like I'm, she didn't pop lightsabers a lot in that episode. She did. <laughs> well, I can't imagine it's a it's a too much of a too much of a, a CG strain, a special effects strain right. to make lightsabers, right? right. Like, Not now, anybody, no, <laughs> right? Like anybody can do it. Yeah, I, right, I see uh, niggas on Instagram doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, it was a good episode. Uh, I'm curious to see uh, where everything is going. I'm actually really excited about Clone Wars. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see, man. We'll right. see. And uh, I, I, I can't wait to be cool when I finish watching all of this goddamn Star Wars stuff. Cool. And I can hang out with the cool kids. Cool. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you and Leonardo. That's right. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I will try to start. I will try to start uh, season two uh, uh, next uh, or this week if I get some time. Uh, actually, maybe tomorrow. Maybe I will tomorrow. Um, all right. Let's. Uh, Let's talk about let's let's talk about the the ruining of uh, rich white people's lives. Um, the uh, the series The Undoing is uh, has the miniseries has has come to an end. Um, we have wa- all, both of us have watched all six episodes. Um, this is the spoiling this right? Yeah, spoiler alert for The Undoing. If you haven't watched it, you should. By the way, you absolutely should watch it. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about it and spoil it. Um, Would you, okay, so the premise of this story from the beginning is married couple, you know, very well to do married couple in, I guess, New York. 
um, who uh, wife is Nicole Kidman, husband is um, uh, what's his name, Hugh Grant, uh, and they have a son. And uh, Donald Sutherland also plays um, Nicole Kidman's father. Uh, this well-to-do family, uh, Nicole Kidman's character um, is introduced to this woman uh, who is a mom, uh, a fellow mom at her son's school. Um, and she's on this new committee that they're on. And she's like this woman is very um, – they're all rich and she clearly is not. And she is very – Hot and they are not. <laughs> um, no, like, but she, she's like a very, like a very, uh, the, like, the women, the, the moms are, are, they look fine. This woman is stunning. Yeah. She really, good, good <laughs> I mean, <Lord>. God damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, even they admit, they were like, she has amazing tits. <laughs> that show was hilarious to me. I was like, she, she does. She, she does. Um, but she's, um, she's sort of, um, She's a little weird though, right? And she's like a little weird and and very um like she has a weird relationship with Nicole Kidman's character. Like she really kind of is infatuated with her, right? And you're like, "Oh, okay." Like so they're going to bang. All right. Well, I'll, I'm here for it. I'll I'll watch this. Um but at a certain point, like she they're at this function and she the this this sultry woman um leaves the function early. Um and then come the next day, she's she's found dead by her son. She's been brutally murdered. Um, and then it's sort of a who done it to figure out who done it. Um, I thought this was really good. I this really was, enjoyed this from beginning to end. This is uh this is uh David E. Kelly, and um, yeah, I mean did David he do, e. Kelly knows what he's doing. I he's, think he did. He did Big, big Little, little Lies, Lies right. also. Yeah. Uh, another who done it that you should watch uh, both seasons. Um, I think season I, one is a little stronger. I haven't watched the second season, but I do want to watch it. I, I love uh, the first season. I thought it was great. I, I think season one is stronger, but season two has Meryl Streep in it, uh, which is <laughs> you know like, I'm gonna hey, watch it. Yeah. You gotta watch it. Um, there's a lot going on in this series, and the series does a very very good job of kind of throwing you for a loop especially at the last you know couple of couple of minutes uh every episode cliffhangers yeah, every, every episode, episode they're like ah! i'll see you next week like and it's like well, wait like i like we must have we must have uh made guesses uh eighty thousand times <laughs> i was like by like episode three or four, I was like, I gotta stop making. I gotta stick with one right. one <laughs> thing because every time I'm like, but wait, but wait, there's more. I was like, right, I'm gonna stick to my one theory, which was and it's weird theory. because like at the end, like in the first episode, like the show tells you who did it through a line of dialogue, through an innocuous line of dialogue, mm-hmm. um, and I just found that was funny. Um, and that's where the first theory came in. And I was like, oh, look, the husband did it. Oh, but what if it wasn't the victim's husband, right? And, yeah. and, and who's the only other husband? But then at, at one point I was like, yo, Hugh Grant did this shit, right? But, but they do something that's so great that's ingenious. Hugh Grant is known for being befuddlingly charming, right? Yep. Like that that's his that's his that, that's the stereotype that he has, right? And like it's also his superpower as an actor too. Yeah, man. It and is. and and it worked on me, yo. Yeah. It worked on me a number of different times yep. cuz he's like I'm going, I'm, 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 I didn't do it. Like, yo, yo, he didn't. He's so nice. He's so he's he's just so good. From when he was the prime minister in Love Actually, he was great. And they use that as and they use that as a plot point in the show. Mm-hmm. Like, because when you when you're good at, when you're good at something, like like you gotta you gotta keep using it. And it's so. And at one point, I thought Nicole Kidman did it. Like, yeah, yeah, I did. I was like, oh, this bitch guilty. <laughs> yeah, I was, right. I, so I'm like, yo, I got to stop having these theories because it's crazy. It's crazy. Because she was like, yo, like one of her friends described her as incredibly stoic. 
And I'm like, yo, like, like they're talking about they're talking about sociopathy. Well, look, uh, Nicole Kidman is like a rock. She, like she she don't she don't emote in this thing. Like yeah. she she seems like she's trying to emote, right? And then the cops are all pressuring her. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is up with these damn cops, yo? <laughs> I bet y'all did. Obviously, it. she didn't do it, right? And 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 then <laughs> but but then they're like, oh, well, we got you at the scene. And 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 then I thought, well, what if? Nicole Kidman, who is a, a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I, I can't remember. I think she's a psychologist. She's a psychologist. She helps married people fix their marriages, right? But her marriages is becoming uh, her marriage is becoming undone. I get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> and and I'm like, all right, well, maybe she's a sociopath. And and she through listening to all of everyone else's troubles, like the shit just bounces off of her. Like she doesn't like she's <laughs> lost all empathy and shit, right? Like may, look, and 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 if she has doubts, then like yo, this the shit was good, man. <laughs> it was the shit was good. Look, I gotta tell you, man. Nobody has nobody has redefined the word cocksucker better than Donald Sutherland. <laughs> that speech was so fucking good. Like I'm not a he's like, I'm a cocksucker. Not in the like trying to be offensive to gay people. Like I'm not like that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this as I will hurt you. <laughs> because you tried to hurt me. I will ruin your fucking life. And it was like Okay, there you go. Donald Sutherland still got it, man. He still got it. Because he, yeah, he, he gave a couple moments that were just really, like, he was digging deep like to kind of pull that out of him. And it was it was good to see. Like, that dude still has it even at his age. Um, yeah, I just thought this was a really good series. Um, but what I will say that I think is more important than just the series itself is uh, two things. Um Man, has Hugh Grant had a hell of a run in the last two years with yeah, uh, the gentleman? Yeah, and he was awesome. I mean, he was unrecognizable in the gentleman, right? He like, stole every scene he was in, yeah. every single scene he was in. I thought he was great. So it's kind of cool to see him shifting to these kind of different roles as he's gotten older. Because I, I look, I know it's very easy to make fun of Hugh Grant and like make fun of Hugh Grant movies, but I like Hugh Grant, <laughs> like, and I like Hugh Grant movies. <laughs> Who doesn't like you? Like that's I, the whole plot point of the goddamn show. Everybody likes him, right? Surely he couldn't. Uh, well, it wasn't him. It was someone else. <laughs> um, fucking, fucking Aunt May was in it. Yeah, sure. Aunt May played his mother. <laughs> Aunt May from Spider Man. <laughs> oh, he's wiling. <laughs> um, but it was like. It's nice to see his career doing what it is doing, which is shifting in interesting, new and interesting ways. Because I think he is a good actor. Um, this an, another thing, but I hadn't thought of it this originally. But this sort of changed my mind on Nicole Kidman too. This and Big Little Lies. Um, I am not a Nicole Kidman fan. I I always found her to be a little bit of a tryhard. Um, I just didn't like her type of acting. I also found her off-puttingly pale which was just disturbing to me um but i think in these last two series she's been really quite good um two very different roles for her um like ultimately um but yeah i i enjoyed both of them i i thought she was good think, in this. you think um this and and her role in big little lies were were very different from each other i i, I found them to be quite similar just one the, of them the outcome weaker than the other yeah, yeah the, the, the outcome sure. is different yeah yeah like that's that's more of what i'm referring to like especially like her sort of latter moments in this in this series um she she is the perfect uh victim this is this is going to sound <laughs> uh, kind of this is going to sound uh this might sound more harsh than i think it than i than i mean it but she is the perfect blank slate she is the perfect POV character for someone to project themselves on. I can see that. Yeah. Because she doesn't, it, it, she's not, I don't find her to be a, a super strong actress. Like I'm not like, no, really like I, her performances aren't like grabbing me, but which is why she plays these very stoic characters, you know, these characters that don't, don't say much and just kind of float through life and always thinking 
Yeah. Um, and that's the perfect POV character to project yourself on, to put yourself in the. Yeah. She's she's a great she's a great ensemble cast member. Right. I'm not generally going to see a movie with Nicole Kidman as the straight up star. That's generally right. not that. Like I'm just not going to. But I, I, I don't know, man. I thought Hugh Grant. Like he carried a lot in this series, like he did. Like he was. He needs an he needs an Emmy for this, man. I really enjoyed it. I thought he was quite good, especially the ending. Especially the ending. Well, I was like, yeah. wow, that is not a part. That is not a part of that guy's career I have ever seen. Like of his <laughs> like his acting range, I had never seen that in him. So it, it was uh, it was cool to watch. Um, yeah, look, I thought the undoing was great. Look, I, I'll be honest. This is the other observation I was going to make. I think HBO Max. I think they. I think they figured out a, a formula that's really fucking good. You know what that formula is? High prestige television with super great actors that are mini series that are not ongoing. That are six to eight episodes. Hit it and then they're out. Done. Oh, you. Oh, you mean like what they do in Europe? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but like they. But they're one season. Like they're not three seasons where it's like two or three episodes. Not even that. But just mini series. Boom. Because yeah. you can get big actors who are, don't want to commit to something that's going to be like seven years. Like no, I'm not. I'm not doing seven seasons of your show. That's how you get Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep is like. Oh, it's like. 12 hours of acting? Like, pfft, that's not yeah, a big deal. Got, 20 hours we acting? Can, we can bang this out in a month? Right. Sure. Sure, I'll do it. <laughs> right. I'm on set doing movies for three, four, six months, right? So it's not a big deal. So you can get these massively big stars for these short runs. It's it's quite smart. Like, there's another one I'm going to start watching uh, this week called The Flight Attendant. Have you seen this? Yeah, my wife. Uh, my wife started watching it without me. Um, because she is uh, a television adulterer like that. <laughs> and, um, but no, I look, we, we've had HBO for a while, right? Like I'm one of the dummies who still has cable, right? Yeah, that's stupid. And, and HBO is the one thing that I say I want from it. Right. Um, because every Sunday, my wife and I, because especially now that we can't go to movies, right. every Sunday, my wife and I will sit down and we will watch the eight. We will sit there and watch the HBO Sunday night lineup. Mm-hmm. And, you know, from from eight to from eight to eleven, there's usually something on. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, and we'll watch it. So HBO has always been like this. And um, and yeah, man, it, and HBO Max is. Is the perfect place to kind of to kind of watch this stuff now that now that HBO max has kind of figured itself out. Yeah. I mean, look yeah. it, I, I think they're nailing it, man. I think, I think they're like, I think they have figured out like that is the way to play it. Cause you can crank out so much more content, so much more content. And it's like, I mean that show, the flight attendant, which is another show about like a woman who wakes up and there's somebody dead and they're like, it's another who done it. Right. Like, I think it's only like going to be like six episodes. Yeah. That's all you need. That's all you need. You don't, you don't yeah. need, you don't need 37 episodes to just drag it into the ground. You just don't. So, yeah. Tell a story and, and that's that. Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm going to try to check out the flight attendant. Um, and it looks like, uh, what's the name is in this, uh, as well. Rosie Perez. Yes. Is in it. Yes. That's exactly what I was talking about. She prefers make love or fuck. <laughs> I don't like the word screw. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, Rosie. I understand. I was still, I would, I would. Do I'm going to check out, um, what's that show? Industry also. Uh, yeah, that's on my list as well. That looks very good. Uh, yeah. Rashawn in the group said it was pretty good too. That whole series is available now. Yeah. I think, and but I think that's going to be on, that's ongoing. But the first season's only eight episodes. So, and that looks like a good um, mixture, like racial mixture of people. Like, I'm just looking at screenshots of each episode. I like a black woman, a white woman, uh, a black man, uh, an Asian man, uh, a South Asian man. Like, they got a little bit of everybody. And I, I always, 
that's something I look look for now, like more than I ever have, is who is seeing what the future of television and movies is supposed to look like uh, versus people who are just trying to keep it all all white, which is uh, some stations, right? Um, next week, uh, speaking of that, next week we we'll, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Tenet. We'll talk about Tenet next week. Speaking of that, so are we gonna have a show next week? I don't know. <laughs> so you might wanna you might wanna hold off. On yeah, it. I don't know. I don't know. We may do early. We may do early because I I've got I have a a dental thing. Lance. So <laughs> yeah, gotta, getting one of my tr- teeth ripped out of my head. You got to get drilled in the mouth. Yeah, ha ha ha. Yeah, just like Deacon. Um, just throw him under the bus for no reason. Um, yeah. So I have a dental thing. So uh, I we may just record early to make sure we can uh, still do a show. Um, all right, science and tech uh, this week. Human passengers on the Hyperloop. Um, by God, they finally did it. Um, they uh, they got a couple of suckers to get into this thing. Um, on it's only a five hundred meter track, which is like a third of a uh, third of a mile. Um, but uh, it did work. Uh, nobody died, and it did. Uh, what did they say? Um, the test ride only lasted 15 seconds, but the pod uh, reached up to 107 miles per hour um, in six seconds, which is pretty Jesus. impressive. Um, if, if it was a longer tube, it can get up to 600 miles per hour. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Um, so this was the Virgin Hyperloop. So originally the Hyperloop was uh, thought about and you know sort of um, theorized – by uh, the guys from SpaceX and Elon Musk. And um, they eventually, I mean, the way they kind of set it up, they were like, look, we wanted to just be open source and whether we're involved or not, we just want, you know, people to work on it. Um, And the biggest one right now is Virgin Hyperloop. Um, It used to be called Hyperloop One, but Richard Branson dumped a bunch of money uh, into it. So they renamed it Virgin Hyperloop One. Um, So this is his. And it's for the most part is exactly the same kind of design that Musk came up with originally, um, but in this link they have a like an eleven minute video that I watched, um, just sort of explaining Hyperloop, um, and they do a really good job. Basically, it's like a maglift train inside of a tube, and because it's inside of a tube, they basically um, are able to remove almost all the air or pressurize the air in the tube so that it, it basically um, like the train gets lifted up um, off the track, you know, using maglift, which is a thing that bullet trains do. So that's not new technology. Um, And then inside the tube, there's no friction. So it takes very little energy to actually move these things at incredible speeds for long distances. uh, It's the human sized equivalent of driving up to an ATM, putting your money in the little pod, closing it, and sending it up there. Like that's that's what it is. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. That look, we've all dreamed of living in a series of tubes, right? That's the that's the opening for Futurama. Isn't that what happens to him? Um, yeah, that's what this is basically. Um, but it is cool. Like they they are actually making – this isn't one of those things where it's like, oh, will it ever happen in the future? Like they're making real, real progress on this. So yeah, like it looks like one of the first places that's going to likely get um, – Get the Hyperloop is between Dubai and Abu Dhabi because there is a lot of money there. <laughs> so yeah. they've got the money to do it. Um, but I did like that they're calling like the stations that you go to for this. They're called portals, which is very, very futuristic. Um, but the the idea is that you would be able to – like there's a big corridor between um, LA to San Francisco um, that – would cut it, cut that trip from like a two hour drive, I think they said, or maybe the, I think the Abu Dhabi to Dubai one is like a two hour drive. Um, that would cut it down to like 12 minutes or some shit like that, <laughs> which is kind of amazing, right? You just hop in this pod, you're, you're gone. And they said that the way it works, like the speed at which it cranks up is, because the tube that they tested on was so short, um, 
it's slightly it's slightly faster than when you take off on a plane, but they're saying like in an actual long tube, it would feel like you leaving on a train, right? Like you've ever taken a train, like when it starts moving, it's not that like whoa, it's not that exciting. It's it's like it's slow and then it kind of just accelerates and like you don't even think about it. Um, versus a plane that you obviously know when you're taking off. Um, this basically fully realized would be exactly like a train, but going 600 miles an hour, which is nuts. Jesus. Yeah. So very cool. Um, they, um, the way, the way things work, it's, um, it's not susceptible to power outages. Um, because again, it's, it's, um, it doesn't take like basically once it gets started, it doesn't take a lot of energy to keep the thing moving. It it just fucking keeps going. It's just the energy kind of to slow it down, which is interesting. Um, and yeah, like, I mean, arguably they could probably put them underwater too if they had to. But I mean, I don't know that. Why would you? Um, in certain places, that seems more dangerous. Um, yeah. Just from yeah, an integrity standpoint, um, it doesn't seem practical to. No, it does not. Do it but but who knows? Maybe they figure out vibranium by then. I don't know. Um. <laughs> But the other thing that I thought was pretty cool is they were like, look, if you, you know, they're like, well, what if, you know, what if you get stuck, right? Like, oh, the fucking power goes out and it's just, you get stuck. The way it works, they actually have these things that can section off parts of the tube at any point, like these doors that kind of come in inside the tube and section it off. And then they could just like pull out part of the tube to get you out. Like it, it, you, it's not like, oh, you're stuck. And then we have to just like wait seven days or <laughs> like, right. no, they can we get gotta, you out <laughs> relatively fast. We got to wait for, we got to wait for the tug train to right to come from the other end and then <laughs> attach it and then <laughs> come back. Right. Pull you the other way. I mean, maybe that would be faster. I don't know. But from the sound of it, from that video, like you could section it off and then like there are emergency, um, uh, outlets on all of the, the pods. So you could just get out and then just get out of the thing. So that's kind of cool. That's, that's dope. cool, man. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Fucking technology, man. Like before we know it, like this could very well be a major thing in twenty years. Which is- yeah, this is this is weird because you know my my dad likes to wax poetic about uh, how far technology has come, like since he was a child, right? Like every time he sees my watch, he's like he he's reminded of of. Dick, Dick Tracy, Tracy yeah. you know, and it's like, yeah, that was science fiction for him as a child, right? <laughs> like, like that didn't exist at all. But I mean, yeah. FaceTime was science fiction for us for like the Jetsons, right? Right. Oh, I'm video gonna call phone. you, call you up on your TV phone, like oh, my my video phone. You got a video phone? Like, yeah, yeah. Like remember, car phones were a thing. Yeah, I remember my uh-huh. aunt had one. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, oh, like nine hundred dollars a corded phone in your car. Yeah, nine hundred dollars a minute or whatever fucking insane <laughs> shit we were paying back then. <laughs> yeah, now everybody has a cell phone. Like it's crazy not to have it. They give them out, you know. So right. yeah, the the hyperloop is not not a crazy idea. It's a very cool idea. But the idea of being able to travel from major hubs across the U.S. and stuff like that, or across the world, is tremendous which means that there wouldn't be it it would lessen the price of flights right um maybe you only fly places that are really far instead of flying like from here to philly or from here to new york why why just take the fucking hyperloop for fucking eight minutes who cares it was a shit yo if you fly from the Baltimore, D.C. metropolitan area to Philadelphia, <laughs> and like this isn't even me. This isn't even me slamming Philadelphia, yo. It's a two-hour drive. Nah, that's get too your far. punk ass on the road. Nah, that's too far. Nah, <laughs> nah, too dangerous. But yeah, I think it's dope. This is very cool. Um, all right. Next up, um, jump right into lightning round. Overlord director Julius Avery will reboot Van Helsing for Universal. Uh, I did not see Overlord. I I did hear that movie is good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's incredibly violent. Like mm-hmm. from a like a horror body horror, you know, perspective. Yeah, 
it, it's pretty it's pretty good. Um, I liked it. I thought it was good though. So they, you ever uh, seen Van Helsing? No, I did not see Van Helsing. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> It was real bad. It was really bad. This is this is this is great news. <laughs> this could not be any better. Van Helsing was a horrible movie. Horrible. I mean, it looked like it looked like the Mummy, right? Like it looked, it had that like feel about it. Don't don't do that to the Mummy. <laughs> do God damn. No, the Mummy is a far better movie. A far <laughs> better movie than Van Helsing. Yo, Frankenstein. Oh, I'm alive. Like yo, Frankenstein was horrible. Let me see if I, I get, let me see if I can find a picture of Frankenstein from that Van Helsing movie. So here's the thing, right? He's going to reboot Van Helsing for Universal. Are they doing the Dark Universe? I like, don't is know. the Dark Universe still happening? I don't because know. if it's still happening, this Van Helsing is not going to be, um, you know, the 1800s Hugh Jackman Van Helsing. Right, because you got a modern Invisible Man. Tom Cruise was in the Mummy. No, but the a, Invisible Man isn't Universal. That was uh, that was um, Blumhouse. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, it was Blumhouse. Well, but don't, don't uh, uh, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> but the isn't isn't the Invisible Man one of the Universal monsters? Yes, but it wasn't. It wasn't technically the Universal Monsters version, All which right, is sad well, because that Invisible yeah. Man was really good. Okay, have well, you watched you that got, yet? I have not. Oh, no, it's on know. it's on HBO Max. You should check it out. It's really I, quite good. I've I've you know I've I I know what happens in it, but uh, you know it's fun. Well, maybe I'll watch it. The um, so the the all right the mummy. The mummy with Tom Cruise was a movie <laughs> and it took place in the contemporary, right? They, they dug up, they dug up that old bag and, um, and they stole her marble rye. Um, <laughs> and then they introduced like Jekyll or uh, Dr. Jekyll. Yeah. Which was uh, kind of cool. Actually. I, I like that. With, and um, what's his face? And he's like the Nick Fury of some sort of dark universe shield or some shit. Yeah, prod- prodigium. Yeah, I think it is. So, so is Van Helsing going to like take place in that world? I mean, it would have to, right? Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. But, uh, but I would think that I would think that they're trying to redo. <laughs> Yeah, that that's the Frankenstein from Van Helsing. Yo, he looks like a Soul Calibur character. You know? <laughs> why does he have abs? Like, why does Frankenstein I mean, have abs? Yeah, I mean, look, if I'm gonna create a monster from from a bunch of miscellaneous parts, I'm gonna get some abs for him. <laughs> yeah, I want my monster to look intimidating. I don't want him to. I don't want. Not him that to he's look seven like, foot tall, you know, like <laughs> a giant, you know, monster. Like, nah, fuck it. But does he have abs? Yes, he has abs. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta have abs, though. You know, for for the ladies or gentlemen. I, I don't know. Whoever wants it. Uh, Whoever wants it. I don't. Um. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you, I don't think this is. I don't think this is the dark universe. I think this is going to be a retry. All right, that's fine. Here's the question. Are you excited for it? And uh and follow up. Why can't I get my goddamn Castlevania movie then? No, I I don't know. I, I don't know. That's, that's all Van Helsing is, right? He's he's Simon yeah. Belmont. Yeah. He's that's got it. All the, he's got all the toys. He's got the holy water. He's got the cross boomerang. Daggers. Uh, uh, the Van Helsing from the, the Hugh Jackman as Van Helsing, which is just just silly to think about. Um, he had an automatic crossbow in like olden times. I was like, that's that doesn't feel accurate to. All right, oh, is this <laughs> from two thousand? Um, oh, it was two thousand four. So yeah, that's about right. Um, a bandolier of arrows. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> No, Van Helsing is a bad movie. Like it's a really bad movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, if they're gonna if they're gonna try to like restart it, 
I guess that's fine. Um, I suppose I'm here for it. Wait, is that the woman from? Wait, was what's name in that? The chick from uh, Under Underworld. I can't imagine that Kate Winslet. No, not Kate. Kate not Kate, Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, Kate I'm. Winslet. I'm pretty sure that's her, dude. I'm I almost. Think you bought- might be wrong. Nah, I think yo. it might be. I think you might be wrong. I think no. it might be being a. Racist. Nope. Kate Beckinsale was in it. Yep. No, that's her, dude. Yo, are you serious? Yeah, dude. This is 2004, man. This is this was not a good look for for Hugh Jackman and Kate Beckinsale, dude. No. no, she has her own gothic series, dude. Why does she? Why is she in this? No. Well, I can't. I can't explain that. This was a year after Underworld came out. She was super into like leather and shit. <laughs> right. Just fucking Evanescence just playing in the background. Like, that shit just screams fucking Evanescence in the background. Well, no, but Evanescence was uh, Bring Me to Life or whatever. That was the theme song for the first Underworld movie. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it? I'm pretty sure it was. I'm I, Look, dude. Like, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but I'm pretty sure that the first Underworld. <laughs> I think you're just confusing Amy Lee with Kate Beckinsale now. Uh, Am I? I think you are. By the way, I'm, we're not shitting on Evanescence before all of you. All of you 40-year-olds get all mad. I loved Evanescence. <laughs> I still have my Bring Me to Life tour jacket. Shut up, nerd. Um, all right. Then maybe maybe I'm, I, I, might be, uh, I might be misremembering, as some people <laughs> say. But I feel like how is that? Yo, there's no way that wasn't in the trailer. <laughs> there's no way. No, I, I refuse to believe Evanescence was not involved in Underworld. <laughs> That's the one in the only that's one of the rare series that got better over time. That's what they say. I have seen all of them. I think I've yeah. seen all of them. Well, of course, because of course you have, because uh I'm a huge Evanescence fan. Well no, the movies <laughs> because according to the the, the creator Oh no, yo, movies, fuck off. Fuck the off. movies are a are a commentary on interracial <laughs> relationships. It's true. And you were in an interracial relationship at yeah. that time. I was. I was. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I, I was I was watching I was watching the I was watching the underworld movies, uh, trying to get a beat on uh, what was coming next. Yeah, yeah. you were, you were. I I presume you were the liking, the liking, and and she was the vampire. Yes, yes. Negroes have to be the dogs in, <laughs> in this situation. Well, I mean, <laughs> vampires make sense for white people. They are right. They just hyper pale. They they suck. They suck the life out of everybody else. <laughs> All their talent, they just take it for their own. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> and oh, black people shit. are angry dogs, apparently. And this dude was black. Really? <laughs> That's some self-respect. Jesus Christ. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, I'm fine with this. I, I am honestly fine with it. That's cool. Here's a yeah, weird story. Your next story is fucking odd. I feel like this is offensive. <laughs> to who? To who? To who is it offensive? <laughs> Peter Dinklage will headline Legendary's Toxic Avengers reboot. Like, you have a picture of Peter Dinklage here. You have a picture of the Toxic Avenger here. I'm sorry, yo. Like, maybe it's just the world and the world has trained me to be hypersensitive. I feel like they're making fun of Peter Dinklage here. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Okay. One. Okay. So, for people who don't know, The Toxic Avenger is a trauma. The original is a trauma film, right? Um, trauma is like where people like James Gunn got their start. It is lower than B movies, right? These are these are like really disgusting, crazy concept films that a lot of there there's been actually a lot of like uh turned out to be like pretty good horror directors and and uh comedy directors have come out of trauma. James Gunn being one of them, right? Probably probably the most famous uh at this point. Um 
Yeah, the Toxic Avenger, I never saw the original movie because I don't watch trauma films. Um, but I've certainly seen clips of it. What I do remember is that they took this very adult film and made a cartoon out of it and just gave that to kids as if we wouldn't notice how fucking weird it was. I love Toxic Avenger, the cartoon. It was awesome. Did you watch that as a kid? I did not. I did not. I was too busy watching the other R-rated movies turned into cartoons like RoboCop. (laughs) Right. Um, Because that's (laughs) – that's – that's what they did back in the day, man. You you took a movie that you weren't allowed to see legally, and they were like, "Wow, this concept actually kind of translates." And they gave you, they made toys for you to play with, so that you, as a as a Ute, as an eight year old Ute, can have RoboCop shoot a guy in the dick. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. They still they were making toxic toxic. Toxic Avengers movies as late as what appears to be um, 2000. And they were planning on doing more in 2016. So the last one seems to be Citizen Toxie, the Toxic Avenger 4. Wow. Uh, Do they call them Toxie for short? Uh, I think so, yes. Yeah, this doesn't... I, I'm not watching. No? Uh, I, I, I'm not watching this, no. I, I don't care. So, okay, do people know the premise of this? <laughs> I don't think I don't think so. Um, so, I, I'll read from Wikipedia. Um, actually, no, that doesn't really tell you anything. Um, basically, it's like a, a nerdy janitor gets uh, toxic waste, uh, exposed to toxic waste, and becomes this... Uh, superhero um, who is the toxic Avenger and he's like really fucked up looking. Um, And it does have like really campy concepts and like really gruesome violence and stuff like that. Um, Yeah. I cannot believe they're rebooting this. Like, yeah, this feels a little insane. I wonder was, was Peter Dinklage in trauma movies? I wonder why would he be? I, I'm I'm just wondering why he would take this role. Like, did he get started in trauma films or something like that? And maybe he feels like a kinship to those kind of things, I wonder. No, I, I think he's like any actor. You know, if someone presents you with something. Especially if you're not, you know, working uh, as much as you think you should. I mean, it's a, it's a gig, right? Like, like, look at Mads Mikkelsen taking over for um, Johnny Depp on that Bigots movie, right? Like, right. Yeah, yeah, no, I look, I I can't believe they're doing Toxic Avenger reboot. Like, okay. I mean, I can. I Do you think? So wild, you it's think a wild choice. Be, do you think it'll be um, kind of toned down a bit and, and give in? And the Toxic Avenger premise feels like it's for kids right which is why they made a cartoon about it like it feels like something that a dirty little boy would like right <laughs> like because boys like dumb dirty like no. toxic avenger right like boys like robots and dinosaurs and dirt and bugs and toxic avengers right like do you think they will reboot this and it will be skewed younger or do you think they'll still keep the the spirit of it being, you know, a splatter movie. Um, I honestly don't know. I, I think I think you may get a splatter movie. Like, they, maybe they go whole hog. But then again, like, in the world of, like, PG-16 kind of stuff, they may just do that and, like, build a pretty successful franchise out of it. Yeah. I mean, that's the goal now. That's right? the goal, yeah. I mean, look, this movie's gotten five movies out of it, or this franchise got five movies out of it, so it's possible. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Wow. Well, okay. uh, the Wonder Woman 1984 runtime has been revealed. Get ready for a whole lot of movie. Uh, that is not uh, my quote. That is from this headline. Um, personally, I don't think 
Well, no, two and a half hours is a lot, but I'm gonna be watching it at home. So it, it like I don't care. It, it, who it, it doesn't matter. Now I'm not the one to um I'm not the one that will start a movie and stop it and start and stop. Um, oh, like multiple days. What multiple day? Fuck that! I don't. I don't. I don't do it. Like when I watch a movie, I want to watch a movie. I want to watch a movie. Right. I don't. But I know people who do that. I know people who will start a movie, and then I don't even like to go to the bathroom when I'm home watching a movie. And oh, I don't mind I know, that. Like, no, I don't want to pause it. I don't. I don't want to pause it. I, I really don't. I had to use the bathroom during the climax of the undoing, and I was pissed, <laughs> literally. And and uh, but no, I'm the type that will sit there and watch a movie. Like if I got to allocate two hours and thirty minutes, thirty one minutes, that's fine. It's more like two hours and twenty one minutes anyway. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, yeah, I'm not yeah. I'm not mad at two thirty one. Again, I'm at home, so I don't I don't care. I don't mind. I'm not weird. I don't mind pausing <laughs> to go to the bathroom. Um. But yeah, it's, um, that works for me. It's fine. Um, I don't even think I would mind 231 in the theater. It's fine. No, I would, I can watch a, I can watch a two and a half hour movie. Aquaman would, so Aquaman two hours was three minutes. hours, dude. Uh, two, so two hours and 31 minutes is 151 total minutes. Aquaman was 142 minutes. So, you know, it's not, it's not that much different. Yeah. Oh, I thought Aquaman was actually three hours. It, like it felt, it felt long. It felt long. I'm like, all right, god damn. I mean, well, I'm enjoying know, the silliness of it all, but like, it felt way too long. I mean, I, I watched Infinity War the other day, and that's longer than two thirty one. Right. right. And you know, I sat in a the theater and watched uh, Endgame, which is three solid hours. Right. So. It, as long as the movie's good, as long as the movie holds my interest, then yeah, whatever. Right. I'll, be, I'll, I'll watch a four hour movie if it's good. I don't care. Yeah. I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to be excited about it, but, but if it's good, it's good. Like that, that's my whole thing. I don't, I don't care. The time doesn't really matter if the movie is good. If the movie well, is bad, it's gotta then be, it's going to be, it's got to be good so. and I got to be into it. Right. Everyone says the Irishman's good. I ain't watching that movie because I'm not into it. Uh, it's something I want to watch, but I'm not compelled to watch. I'm just not compelled. No. Not at four hours. I'm not compelled. Get out of here. Yeah. Um, uh, movie and TV news this week. Uh, Netflix cancels Queen Sono after renewing it. So Queen Sono was their first in-house, um, African, uh, African based, uh, original series. Uh, they had bought a couple, but this was their first, that had, that was their first one that they produced from, from the ground up, um, in house. I watched the first couple episodes of this. I thought it was okay. It was like a cool, um, you know, country hopping, uh, action spy kind of, uh, series, um, with a black, uh, black female lead, which was dope. Um, they they said that they they were coming back for a season two, but then they had to make the difficult decision to cancel it uh, due to coronavirus budgeting. Um, this kind of sucks, and this this seems to be happening more often than not. Um, I think Disney announced that they're canceling the new Ducktales series, um, which is kind of a bummer because um, a lot of people said it was quite good. Um, but my question is. Is it so hard for them to just hold off on things? I don't understand why you have to cancel things off the off the jump. Or maybe they're figuring they're not going to recover money for quite some time. Um, I think it's more of a you know, it's it's more of a layoff, right? Like I would imagine that if things get back to normal quickly, which um Listening to the radio this afternoon, I don't think they will because black people will not take the uh, the vaccine. Um, but if things yes they will get back to yeah, yes, they, yeah they they say they won't. You know what? A lot of them, I don't think they will. Uh, uh, they will if your job says you can't come back to work without it. 
You can't put your kids in school without it. Can a job mandate you do it? A job can just say that uh, you can't work here. That's all they have to say. You can't work here. Until okay. you, that's it. That's all. That's a business, dude. Hey, you can't come in here without a shirt on. Like, that's just that's just the law of the company. Like, you just can't be in here with your with your ass up. <laughs> like, uh, uh, where where say that at? On where the door. No shoot. No <laughs> shirt. No service. Right. Like that's not in my job description. My job description didn't say that I needed to wear a shirt. No. You take the, <laughs> you take your titties, uh, male or female, and get the fuck out of here. Um, no, I think once 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 that starts, I mean, California is getting some of the Pfizer, um, like three hundred thousand uh, doses of the of the Pfizer vaccine, like next week or something. Um, they're just kind of like they already have it, waiting for the FDA to be like it's good, and then just deploying it to frontline workers. Um, no, I think once it starts rolling out, I think companies are going to be like, yo, you cannot come in here. Like, you cannot work here until we have some proof that you had it. And some people are going to be cool like, it. I ain't going to do it. Oh, I'm, I'm going to do it on the sly. Like, yeah, of course, cool, because you want a job. You want your kids yeah. to go back to school? Also, how do you prove it? Right? Like, that's Documentation. my fear. My fear is just going to be, my fear is just going to be like, no, 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 I, I got it. I got it. No, I have to wear the mask now. I got it. No, no just documentation. Like, you got to get the shot. There's a document. There's documentation here. Here's your documentation. You had it done. It's not that hard. But look, don't get it done and then stay your ass at home. Or everybody else who's smart get it done and all you idiots don't get it done and you just keep getting each other sick and dying. That's on you. That's on you. Man, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, if things get back to normal, uh, I, I feel like a lot of these things that are canceled might come back. I hope so. I hope that's true. But but at the same time, it might be the perfect excuse to cut your losses if right. numbers aren't, you know, doing what you thought they were doing. Right. You're like, I mean, I, I didn't hear too many people talking about Queen Sono. I didn't finish the season. Um, so I, I don't know if like uh, maybe maybe like pulling what you're saying is like. Eh, maybe we should just cut our losses and just be done with it. This is a good excuse, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, it, it sucks because again, it's, it's a, it's a specifically South African story, um, that we are not seeing a lot of, um, getting a, on a major platform. So, um, I, I, look, I hope that it is just kind of a layoff and not, not a, a full end, but it's going to be really hard if those people get, get new jobs, new roles somewhere else and stuff like that, where you can't get the crews back together. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. I mean, if they were, you know, if, if they're willing to, if they're willing to lay it off, they probably, you know, I think it would be, I think their thinking is it would be nice to have it back, but we don't need it. Right. Right. You're not going to lay off anything you need. No, you're not getting rid of the umbrella Academy or, or right. any of these other big shows. Right. Um, speaking of that, um, Ellen Page uh, uh, came out this week as trans, uh, changing her name to Elliot Page. Um, and she will continue to star in uh, Umbrella Academy, mm. Netflix's uh, big show. Um, and you get those pronouns, man. Oh, I'm sorry. He. Uh, I apologize. Um, and what's interesting is, and I thought this was dope, Netflix went back and changed all the credits for his films to reflect uh, – his uh his new name which i thought was awesome yeah that is uh that is cool man that is cool i uh i did what i i tell people not to do um on you know this this hit various uh places and i clicked on some of the comments and uh mistake you know most of the comments uh, and by most, I mean a majority. And by majority, I mean the strictest definition of majority, 51 to 49, right? Uh, most of them were very positive. But, um, you know, you get the you get the ignorant motherfuckers out there that uh, that don't understand or choose not to understand. And Look, I'm not going to say that I understand everything that goes on in that community. No, I don't. Um, but 
if he wants to be called Elliot, then I'm going to call him Elliot. And it's that simple. It's not hard. And it's not. And this is this is a really cool thing that Netflix is doing. Um, and I, I hope that other... Uh, I hope that other services and stuff like that would do this for people. You know what I mean? Because right, this is a this this is this is hard for people. From what I understand, this is a very difficult thing for people to right. to come out and do and and say, "Hey, this is me. This is me living in my truth." And you got to respect it, man. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I do think it's I, I I think it's awesome for them to just be like. You know, Elliot Page will be back in season three of Umbrella Academy. Boom, done. Like, and we just move move forward. What will be interesting is is her. I assume her character on is. the show is a woman. His character is a woman, right? Excuse me, his character is a woman. So that'll be interesting. Do they do they do they write a change to that character, or do they or does does he continue to play? a cisgender woman. That'd be interesting. I, I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. I'm just curious. Another, another trans actor taking jobs <laughs> away from cis white men. When is it going to stop guys? I, I mean, I did, I did find it. I did find it interesting. There was like some joke. It was like, uh, you know, uh, Ellen page, uh, comes out as trans, uh, as a trans man, uh, changes her name, uh, changes, his name to uh, Elliot Page, and then it was like the meme underneath was like straight trans people very straight confused trans about trans. masturbating, to, <laughs> masturbating yeah. them. Like I don't, I don't know which, I don't know, I, I don't know what's happening. Um, yeah. So look, it's it is what it is. Um, look, I've always enjoyed uh, his performances and stuff. Like I just have like. Even back in Hard Candy, that was the I, I'm pretty sure it was the first first time I saw uh, then Ellen Ellen Page, but um, yeah, always good, always good. So um, again, I I didn't get into Umbrella Academy. I'm not one of those people who is going to wait seven episodes before it gets interesting. I refuse, yeah, man. I like, refuse. It, I, I I I sat through that thing, and it literally takes seven episodes to to really get good. And you can't just start on episode seven because you can't, you have to, the reason episode seven is good is because you had to get through the muck, right? Like, and no. nah, yeah. I'm just, I'm yeah. not willing to give you seven hours. <laughs> like I'm not for, and, and everyone says, look like the new season, season two was dope. And I'll, I'll never know. I haven't, I haven't watched season two. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll see if my wife wants to watch it. If she wants to watch it, then I'll watch it, but it's not on my, I got too much stuff to watch. I got, I got, that's my, I whole got thing. like four more seasons of, of clone wars. <laughs> right. Then you got rebels <laughs> right. like four or five seasons. Yeah. You ain't never going to finish. Um, so yeah, good, good on Netflix. Uh, and congratulations to, uh, Elliot page, um, for, uh, being able to stand in her truth or his truth. Excuse me. Uh, that's a good thing. Always. Um, next up, uh, Warner brothers goes all in on home release. Wow. <laughs> This is the big story of the week. Um, Warner Brothers said, look, uh, are, are you happy about the Wonder Woman thing? Do you like apples? How about these apples? How about a bushel of apples? Because uh, we just stopped giving a fuck. They will be releasing all of their movies coming out in 2021 They in theaters. They will also have a simultaneous HBO Max uh, one-month engagement. Um Release the exact same day. Um, so that includes, and these are some pretty big movies. The Little Things, Judas and the Black Messiah, which I didn't notice was on the list until I just read that. Um, yeah, that'll, that'll really help black on black cinema out. Thanks. <laughs> Fucking great. I'm super excited for that movie. So I'm all in. Um, Tom and Jerry. I didn't know that was going to be a movie. Uh, Godzilla and versus Kong. I don't care. Um, Mortal Kombat. Sure. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I, I, I'll watch it. Look, 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 here's the thing. I wasn't paying to see it in the theaters. I can tell you that <laughs> right now. Hell no. 
Um, those who wish me dead, the conjuring, the devil made me do it. Um, in the Heights, Space Jam, a new legacy. Uh, and let's get to the, to the big guns, uh, suicide squad, uh, reminiscent, malignant Dune, the many saints of Newark, King Richard cry macho and the matrix four. All of them will be available in 4K Ultra HD and HDR on HBO Max. That is insane. Yeah. Yeah. I, I cannot believe they're doing this. Um, that being said, highly excited. Um, look, this is 2021. So they're like, oh, look, don't worry. You know, the theaters will be back open. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, but at the same time, why am I paying to go see it? Why am I paying? Why am I paying to see Dune in theaters? Although I kind of want to see Dune in theaters, but like yeah, I was about to say, you wouldn't like if uh, if everything is back to normal relatively quickly. Look, I'm gonna tell you right now, Judas and the Black Messiah. I'm watching at home. I'm not going to see that in the theaters. No, I mean, yeah, I get it. Like, I want to see spectacle at the theater. Uh of this list. Suicide Squad, Dune, Matrix 4. That's it. In theaters. Yeah, that's the problem. Is they ain't got shit that I want to see. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that's it. But like I would see Wonder Woman in theaters. Oh, and yeah, not, in Wonder Woman, of course, of course. But it's not gonna be in theaters. Right. Not, so not when I'm going. And you got a month to watch it? Yeah. Or, you know, uh, there are other ways, especially because right. you're putting them all out there. I, you know, you're opening the door to your house. Of course, people are going to rob you. Right. So yeah, <laughs> that'll be prevalent. But um, but I, I, I don't do that uh, as much anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for uh, this is this is a weird I I wonder why they're doing it because they gave this whack ass excuse about how they're doing it for Wonder Woman because they want the property to be relevant like they want it to still be relevant when they're That's Wonder Woman, dude. It's, yeah, it's Wonder Woman, yo. Like you say DC heroes, she is the second or third one. Yeah. And you know, like, so that that's a really weird excuse. Um, is it to get people to buy HBO Max? I mean, yeah, but like we talked about, this is only for a month, right? Are you going to have people log in for a month and then log and then and then immediately cancel? So I, I think they're I think they're banking on people forgetting. <laughs> that's really yeah, dead. That's gotta be it. Right? It's a lot of money. There's a lot of money gets left on the floor. It's just people just forgetting to to or or it's a good program and people go, Oh well, damn, there's a lot of stuff on here. Because there is. Because there is. It's a, it's actually very uh it's actually very good. Like I'm using it more than I'm using Netflix. Oh, one hundred percent at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Last thing I saw on Netflix was that Kevin Hart uh comedy special. And I didn't put it in checked out for a reason. So God it, it, it's, it's, it's not his best work. Um, so yeah, this is, this is interesting, man. Like, I wonder how much money they're, they're like, I wonder how much money they're about to lose. They're going to lose. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to make a lot of money. Um, but then again, people staying on subscribe to the service, like, they're basically banking on the service being so good that you just stick stick around. And it is good. What is fucked up is they're like, hey, you have a free trial right up until Wonder Woman comes out. And they were just like, that shit is done. That's the smartest thing that they've done. Absolutely. <laughs> Get rid of it. <laughs> Fuck that. That's the smartest thing. Now, look, if you really want to screw people over, you get rid of profiles on, on these oh, things. Oh, damn. <laughs> I ain't no giving it to your friends. Get out of right. here. Yeah. <laughs> mm. You get one login at a time. Like, God damn. Man, piracy is going to be rampant. It's, well, it's about to be lit with a lot of high quality movies. 
They're going to have Judas and the Black Messiah up there before. It'll be up there for less than the length of that movie being like like how long it takes to watch it before that shit is up on torrents. <laughs> Perfect HD. Ultra HD. Um, so, yeah, look, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I Look, I can tell you right now, Suicide Squad, Dune, and The Matrix 4 – are all movies that we're going to get screeners to in 2021. If I'm not going to that screener and I don't feel compelled to do so, um, I will just watch it at home. I'm not going to like, I'm just not. It, might have to, uh, might have to dust off coming distractions. <laughs> well, you got plenty of content. It's plenty of content. Are you ever going to theaters again? Like, let's say that this is... <laughs> Are you ever going to theaters again? I'm serious. I don't dude. know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> like, I, I will. I, I, I'll I, tell you because... <laughs> that all depends. You know. That all depends on you listeners. Do what the fuck you're supposed to do. Get the shot. <laughs> I, I will go to theaters because my wife and I, you know, we make it a date night, right? But... You got a kid. You ain't going to a theater. <laughs> if <laughs> it was... No, we... Stay over, stay over Gigi's house, and uh, and and once this is all over, wait, you have to drive all the way to Baltimore. No, well, if we want to go to Baltimore and oh. see something, yeah, but otherwise, we'll get my sister to come here. Oh, okay, and we'll watch something. But yeah, I will still go to theaters. But I'm hoping that this keeps the casual movie fan. I feel like I hope this keeps. Feel. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, those wretched, filthy casuals. I hope this keeps them at home so they can talk and play with their phones and not pay attention yeah. and be loud and, and rowdy and all that shit. I hope it keeps them at home, and I hope this ushers in a new wave of people who enjoy the theater experience will will go and we all can be uppity about movies. Because, look... I. I'm, the way I am in theaters is the way I am here. I hate it when my wife, when we're watching something and she's doing this, she's <laughs> not paying attention, just right. not paying attention. Like, and I hope that she doesn't hear that she doesn't pay attention to something and say, "Oh, what did he just say?" Hmm. I don't know. Maybe you should get off your phone. <laughs> Because I, I it, like, like we're watching something. Like, watch it, right? So, I don't know, man. But at the same time, like, it's mad convenient. You know? <laughs> it is, man. It it's is mad convenient. Like, I'm not gonna pretend. Like, look, I really want to see Dune in theaters, but I know Dune is gonna be mad long, and it's kind of nice to just be able to go pause. Hold on, second. let me get some snacks. Let me go to the bathroom. <laughs> I can relax. I can watch it quietly in my home. Yeah. No, I tell you right now. I'm super excited for The Matrix 4. If y'all niggas don't do what you're supposed to do, I'll be at home, yo. Like, I'm, I'm just going to be at home. I, uh, Wonder Woman will be the litmus test for me. If I have a really good experience watching this thing, <laughs> you ain't going to no th- You ain't going to no theater, yo. <laughs> I ain't going, yo. I'm not. I'm not. But, it, <laughs> again, if that movie is good, all I need to do is sit down to watch it on a Friday or Saturday night. My kid is yeah. in bed by 8.30. This movie is two and a half hours. My wife loved the first movie. Sit down. Hey, Wonder Woman's out. Cool. Let's sit and watch it. Great. The only other Because it's on what? December 25th? Oh, you, yeah. you, you had all your Christmas shenanigans. Ah, nah, nah, nah. Like, I think we're going down to my, 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 uh, my father-in-law's for Christmas. Um, and, you know, meeting up with, um, her side of the family on Christmas because they're all like super quarantined. My my nieces and nephews are all like the prime age for all of this. Like they're they've seen Clone Wars, they've seen all of all the shit. Right, they're prime age for this. Yeah, hey, want and they have HBO Max. Hey, you guys want to watch the new Wonder Woman movie? Hell yes, sure, sounds great. Yeah, man, I um, this is the litmus test for me. Wonder Woman. <laughs> it's over. It's over. And if I if I really if I really am like this is I can sit right in here and watch that movie 
and just lock my door and <laughs> leave my family alone. Just get out of here. Yeah. I love that you have a lock on your door. Oh, of course. Get out of here. I got, I got to work. <laughs> I got to work on watching this movie. <laughs> Like an X hamster is not a work site. <laughs> <laughs> no, X videos is. <laughs> yeah, okay, um, yeah, you're putting <laughs> in work all right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 15 minutes. So, yeah, man, this is this is wild. This is wild. Uh, we also have to fight a new wave of spoilers because there will be the people yeah. who get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to <sighs> watch a movie to be able to, to just be the first to, to post that they've watched it, right? Like, like Which I is fine. Like I like just I don't even I, just don't I spoil it. it. Just don't spoil it for it. people. Man. I hate it. I hate it. Just, just <laughs> sit your ass there. Go go to sleep. Go to sleep. Stop trying to beat everybody to the fucking punch. And if you do, great. Wait wait for everybody else to watch it. Like it's gonna be a whole new like line of internet etiquette that we're gonna have to that we're all going to have to collectively try to yeah. figure out. I I am. I, I'm really not looking forward to that. <laughs> I just no, to, yo, I'm, I'm not. not, yo. Like, cause it's the the the, the fir- people are gonna be posting memes at eight o'clock in the morning. Like, all right, yo. Like, just yeah. Just, I've I've never just, understood yeah. that. Like, I guess if you're if you're already up, if you're already up, then you're like, all right, cool. I want to watch the new Mandalorian, right? Like, Mandalorian. I'm sure it's eleven o'clock at night uh, here. Mandalorian, I'm sure, comes out at like 12, 12 a.m., right? I'm I'm going to go to bed because I have to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, yo, I, but like I there are people you. who are like, no, I'm going to be up so I can watch it at 12 o'clock and then write spoilers at like 1 o'clock. Why? Why? What is the point? Just be like, oh, it was a really great episode. Or don't say anything. At least give people – people are like, oh, like when – I remember when the Marvel series were on Netflix – and they're like, oh, you haven't seen the new – started watching the new season of Daredevil? I'm like, yo, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. It just came out. They're like, I'm already on episode 7. Nigga, how? <laughs> <laughs> you have anything else to do? Nah, nothing else to do. Nah, nah. Benjamin is a young man's game. I, I don't sure. got it in me anymore, man. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Like, I don't. Like, I just – I wish I did, I, but I don't. I, look, I'm like, oh man, Whew. new episode of the boys. Wow. And I'll watch the next episode next week. This is awesome. Yeah. Last yeah. thing I binged was, um, was season one of Luke Cage. That <laughs> wow. Was, <laughs> that was a lot, yo. That I, was that in was one lot. day. Yeah. In one day. And that was a lot. And I'm just like, I'm I, stinky. <laughs> filthy I, I, yeah you feel like a monster dude like yeah ugh. i don't remember the last time i just binged a whole season of something oh no 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 i think i you can tell this is before we before we had our daughter um i binged like one whole season of homeland like i was just like that show is super good. Like it gets super dumb a- after a while, but I was just like, I was into it. I'm like espionage and all that other shit. Um, so I was like all in and I watched like season three or two or something like that all in a day. And my wife was like, you okay? I'm, like, I'm fine. <laughs> good. <laughs> I was fucking bloodshot. Like on a Saturday, I was just like, I got nothing else to do. You got work to do. I'm going to watch all of Homeland <laughs> or all of Homeland. <laughs> but like, that was it. I just don't, I don't feel compelled to do that anymore. Nah, I, I, I ain't got it in me. No, I ain't got it in me, man. Nope. Um, but yeah, this is super interesting news. Absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, what the fuck brought to you by JTD? A man attends celebrity wedding with six girlfriends in inverted commas, as they say across the pond. And all allegedly pregnant with his babies. A socialite a, uh, named Party Mike, oh, Pretty Mike, excuse me, Party Pretty Mike, Mike uh, sparked controversy after attending a high profile wedding accompanied by six 
heavily pregnant women, all allegedly carrying his babies, describing the women as his six baby mothers to be pretty Mike was filmed rubbing and kissing each of their bellies at the wedding of uh, an actor uh, to his girlfriend. Uh, the socialite who owns a nightclub uh, wore a pink suit while the six dates put on matching long silver dresses or two piece outfits that emphasized their baby bumps. Where is this? Arkansas. <laughs> no, this is uh, this is one of our people, Jay. This is, uh, oh, this is Africa. Nig- yeah, this is Nigeria. Yeah. Of course. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> I don't like where this is going at all. Um, no, yeah, that's not a, that's not okay. Like, <laughs> man attends it. wedding with six girlfriends, all allegedly <laughs> pregnant with his babies. This look, nigga look like he. This nigga look like he. He is I'll, straight, like from Baltimore. Yeah, I thought it was Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> yo, how? How yo? How? No film trick. We just live in our best life. Uh, pretty Mike captioned the photo with him and six pregnant women. Yo, very, first of all, very pregnant women. Right. All at the same damn time. Come on, man. Like you in for a world of hurt. Yo, if you if you are ha- if you are a decent man, he is not you are in for a world of hurt. Right. Yo, of he course, he's not. He has six women pregnant at the same damn time. Right. And he got his head beaten in with a bottle of peroxide. <laughs> fucking asshole. Jesus. Look, man. This is so um, this is so callous. Th- this is I, I don't I don't appreciate shit like this. Uh no, I don't think it's cute. No. Having a baby ain't cute, yo. Like it's a fucking serious <laughs> obligation. And this guy's just I don't know, man. I try not to I'm not trying to culture judge, but like this is some repugnant it's, shit. <laughs> it's tacky to me, yo. It's super fucking tacky to me. It was you're not gonna be there for any of this fucking kids, you dickhead. Like you're just not. You're not. <laughs> you're not. You're not. And like you're not. Ugh. All right. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah I'm gonna, I'm about like, to make a goofy story really serious and like I'm getting pissed. Like every <laughs> second of that video that goes by is making me angry. Ugh. I don't like shit like that. I fucking Dumb, oh just, boy! Just dumb people uh, breeding, just fucking idiots. Yeah, that's what it is. Is is dummies breeding? Yeah, and just, um, yeah, it's <laughs> just fucking. All right, bro. Yeah, it's just right. making me mad. <laughs> um, like, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't. Why? I can't look at shit like that. Um, my story: world's strongest gin comes with a beaker and a very specific mixing instructions. Long story short, you can't just use this like regular gin, or it'll kill you. <laughs> Um, it's 95% alcohol by volume, uh, which is pretty high. Um, um, uh, Alabama. Uh, no, it's in the UK. <laughs> oh, yeah. It feels like this, it feels like something, uh, one of JT's uncle, JTD's uncles would, uh, make like out in a shack yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Hey boy. Don't they, don't they make this stuff in like toilet water or some shit? Um, I mean, if I if I recall, JTD was drinking some sort of hooch called like bathtub liquor or some shit like that. So yes, they do. <laughs> That's what they're into down there. Um, yeah, you can only use a um, you can only use five milliliters of it at a time. Um, and to give you an idea, Micah, they, they're like you can make a gin and tonic with this. Um, and you only have to use five five milliliters of uh, this gin, which is seventy five percent less alcohol than you would need with normal gin. Like that's how powerful it is. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, five milliliters is like the the dosage of medicine that we give our son. Right. right. Yeah. When you give him like Tylenol or some <laughs> shit like that. Yeah. It's not. It's nothing. Right. If I put if I put five milliliters of gin in my wife's G and T, she'd be like, "There's no gin in this." <laughs> And I would be like, you're right. Um, yeah. So apparently if you drink it straight, it burns. <laughs> so don't because you'll die. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, people apparently really need this, uh, the mo- the strongest gin in the world. But it's only $40, which is pretty good. That feels, uh, that feels fine. I have no idea what, uh, how much anything, I have no relation to no. determine if that's a good price. No, 40 not. bucks, 40 bucks is not bad if it's like good gin. I mean, I, I've certainly spent a decent amount of money for some good gin. Um, some people would describe gin as tasting like pine needles. Uh, that seems correct to me. <laughs> you know, what? <laughs> I would never understand what what people who drink alcohol get from it. <laughs> well, I was just like, drink. I was drinking scotch, um, which basically, I mean, it was arguably. Um, it, it is not. It's not. It's not something if you've never had it before you can really recommend to people in all honesty. Like, oh yeah, no, it's it's, it's such a sweet, smooth taste. No, no, it's not. It, so how did you start drinking it? You start drink. Well, you, you start out like a like a like a like a uh, like a bitch, and you drink a bunch of sweet nonsense, and then you slowly over time your taste buds change when you get older, and you like less and less sweet things. So it's it's um. It just kind of ramps up in that degree. Like that's just how it works. Yo, I, all right, yo. All but right. it's like you don't eat as you probably don't eat as many sweets as you used to when you were no, a kid. No, I understand it. I I one hundred percent understand it. What I don't understand is pouring something and ingesting it, and it tastes like a tree. Specifically, pine needles. I need you to put some respect. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. Like. It has what you would think liquid pine needles would taste like. That's what it kind of tastes like. But oh when, God. but but the thing is, when you put it with other things, that's what changes the taste, right? That's that's what it enhances the taste in other ways and stuff like that. Like that's what makes it good. So it's not <sighs> okay. So it's like it's like drinking pure vanilla extract. Yes, which has <laughs> which is alcohol, right? Yes, that's true. Like, if you drink pure vanilla extract, you will get drunk. It has a high alcohol content. You shouldn't, because that's really expensive by volume. Uh, you know, it's like that little bottle is mad pricey. Um, no, just get yourself some scotch. Stop playing around. How'd you yeah, get drunk? Uh, I was drinking vanilla extract like some sort of lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> like some alcoholic. <laughs> I, did I ever tell you that story my boss told me? Like, he was like, he used to, like, work in a coal mine in Texas and lived in a tent. Like he was kind of a hippie guy, um, like out in the woods because he didn't have any money, him and, his, uh, and him and his buddy. And like this lady who worked at the coal mine was like, well, it's getting cold out there, so I got you guys uh, some liquor um, if you want it. And she just got them a couple bottles of vanilla extracts. <laughs> She's like, you can drink this if you get <laughs> if you want to. I was like, um, like damn, it, we that bad? <laughs> like, <laughs> She's like, well, it's sweet. <laughs> like, all right, lady, you're fucking insane. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I'm not an alcoholic. Relax. So, yeah, there you go. Um, yes, I would try this. By the way, for those, yeah, of course, of course, you trying the uh, you trying the micro dose like a child, or are you pouring a glass? Well, you can cut it with something, but no, I would no, I one, I would try it straight up first because I'd want to see. Um, what it was like. Um, yeah. Then I would, uh, yeah, I would, I would microdose like I did right before the show. Right. You asked me, Micah, a couple of weeks ago when I told you, like, you, you should try to do the show high, uh, on weed. There you go. Nah, nah, you know what I mean? I mean like Jack high. Oh no, I'm not. I mean, I mean, you got to look like pig pen from the peanuts. <laughs> no, you know I mean? not a smoke cloud. <laughs> That's insane. No, no, um, no, but I, I, I have a medical marijuana card now. It's awesome. I can't believe Yo, they just you, give them out. <laughs> I cannot you, believe they give them out. It's insane. I swear, you are the most like you. You are the most sedity dude that I've ever met. Like at first, I didn't know <laughs> what the term sedity was, right? Because I, you know, I'm nah, not yeah. from the south, but. <laughs> I'm not from the south. But but you and JTD have are having a sedity off, and you are creeping up close to him. No, I feel I feel like I feel like um, I, I I've overtaken him. 
I, mm, I think he's got, I think the only, the only reason I give him the edge is because he's massively wealthy. <laughs> right. That's the, that's the difference. That's not fair, though. That's not fair. I didn't marry, I didn't marry the governor of my state. <laughs> Get out of here. He's he's massively wealthy and has has so much money at his disposal, whereas you might put him on to certain things. He 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 is like you've got the talent, but he's got the funds to just suck everything up. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's not yeah, that's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. Yeah, I, I'm I'm Rocky in Rocky Four. I'm climbing mountains. I'm lifting wagons to to get my sedity powers up. This nigga's got a, a full class gym. He's got yeah, free steroids. He's got, he's got the arcade punching machine. Yeah, it's not fair. I gotta fight. Yeah, I gotta fight a tauntaun on a fucking Russian mountain. It's not fair. How do you? I got a Baltimore salary. How do you? Um, no, he don't want none of the smoke. Get out of here. <laughs> um <laughs> we're having gets the diddy off we kind of are it's really quite funny it's my it's my favorite competition uh <laughs> trailers this week um yeah uh this is uh lupin uh this is based i don't think based on the anime um <laughs> no lupin the lupin is a um a french a, a French thief, like he's a he's the a gentleman thief. Yeah, a gentleman thief. Uh, think, um, think. Uh, what's that movie with Thomas uh, Crown Affair? James Bond. Yeah, think the Thomas Crown Affair, right? But for France, the the anime Lupin the Third is that character is the grandson of the original Lupin. Oh, okay, and, that's interesting. I didn't know. That. And this is just like a re. This is like a reboot of. This is a different telling of that story, right? Right, like because he, they even make reference to the original book. Right, he is like the the Sherlock Holmes of of French literature, right? right. Except he's you know a villain, not a villain, a thief. Right. Um, and it stars Omar Omar Sy, who uh, was I think he was Bishop. Yeah, he was in, uh, in Days of Future Past. <laughs> So the trailer, so this thing is in French, uh, apparently. And the <laughs> I will trailer, be wa- I will be watching this in French. <laughs> yeah, because the trailer has the dubbed version of it, and it sounds to me like they chose Michael Jai White. That's one hundred. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure that's exactly who that is. Look, I like Michael Jai White. I don't like Michael Jai White for his acting. I like Michael Jai White for him beating the shit out of people and 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 talking jive while doing it. Um, it is very off-putting to hear Michael Jai White's voice coming out of Omar Sy's mouth. It, so, it is very weird. It's very, very weird. I will check this out, but I will check it out in French, and I will have to convince my my wife because she's going to want to watch it, but she hates subtitles. She's one of those people. I am more than okay to watch this subtitled uh, with with Omar Say's uh, actual voice because I find Michael Jai White a bit distracting <laughs> in this trail. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like you would you, like? Didn't I just see you? Uh, in, in the first three minutes of that Netflix movie that you were doing, yeah, were you just front kicking a nigga through a door or some shit? Like I can't, <laughs> yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't. Imagine I'm having a hard time taking that seriously. Michael Jai White as a gentleman spy or a gentleman thief. Uh, yeah, it just it's very off putting, right? And they should have. I don't. I like. I feel like they should have given whoever the person was who was going to do the voice acting a slight French accent. Instead of yeah. like a straight American accent, like just find a French person who can speak very good English. You know what I mean? It just, I, I don't know. Like it, it just felt weird to me. Hell, you could even found uh, uh, an English. You could, you could do what they did in Assassin's Creed Unity, which is all about the French Revolution. And if you choose to play that game in English, they just, they just give everybody English accents. Like everyone sounds like they are from England talking about the French Revolution. 
Uh, <laughs> I would rather you have done that than have Michael Jai White's distracting ass voice. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, it's a little too deep. Like it's just it's it's just very weird to me. And he has a he has a very like distinct voice. Like there's I knew who special. it was. It, I knew who it was exactly the second he said something. I was like, the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, I had to do a double take. I was like, that's not. That don't sound right, right? And his his voice isn't bad. It's no, just it's Michael not. Jai White's voice. Yeah, it's just very distracting for this. Yeah, it was a, it was a very odd choice. It's not choice. I mean, hey, whatever. But this is an ongoing series, which is dope. Yeah, I like a good I like a good thief uh, story. So um, I'm here for it, and I like uh, Omar say. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Intouchables, I think uh, Kevin Hart redid it. Um, recently, uh, with, I want to say it was like Ed Norton or something. Um, but, uh, the original Intouchables, well, it's not even the original, but the one with Omar say is very, very good. Um, that's like, I think it's the highest grossing French film of all time now, or it was at one point. Um, but it was a really, it's a true story. It's a really, really good story. And he was great in it. So, um, yeah, that dude is um he was wasted as bishop. Uh, I actually like the look of him in that X-Men movie. Um but he was totally wasted. So he never got to do anything. So yeah. I look forward to the MCU version of Bishop. So yeah. There you go. Um any other parting words before we get out of here? Do you want uh do you want uh uh bishop with the with the number 1 or do you want bishop with the with the perm? Um, I like that they just went with dreads <laughs> for Omar say and didn't give him uh, uh, a perm. Uh, that's I, I don't need Bishop with a futuristic soul glow haircut. Like that shit is ridiculous. <laughs> like where are they even getting the activator during those times? Like it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Like, come on. Fair enough. <laughs> come on. We're talking about accuracy here. Um. All right. That's it for us, and we will see you guys uh, next week. See you. You're watching the Nerdpocalypse YouTube channel. Make sure you click that button to subscribe and check out our weekly podcast where we talk about movie, TV, news, tech, and weird stories from around the internet.